Ever wish there was a solution to keep pests and diseases off your tomato plants without hours of vigilance and labor from you? Are you tired of pulling weeds all around your tomato patch? There's a companion plant for every issue that your tomatoes face in the garden, and it can all be taken care of for you in the heat of summer while you're sitting in the shade, sipping your lemonade. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening, and if you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Start now by clicking subscribe and click the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. In today's video, I'm gonna show you 14 companion plants that will keep your tomatoes pests and disease free and take care of some of the weeds they've got. I'm also gonna show you two plants that you never want near your tomatoes. Companion planting is a study that fascinates me. However, you will not be seeing a lot of the companion strategies uh, on this video that you normally see on sites like Pinterest, mainly because a lot of it is complete nonsense. So if you're here for information like planting basil next to my tomatoes will make my tomatoes taste better, you might wanna go somewhere else. Because in my experience and in all the research I've seen, that is impossible. What you will hear from me is evidence-based companion planting strategies. Now, if you have one of those possible folklore myth type of companion planting strategies in your head, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd like to see just how many we can debunk. Let's start off with the most famous pest for tomatoes, and that would be the tomato hornworm. Hornworms can strip the leaves off of your plants within a couple of days. There are two companion plants that can help you deal with these chubby little devils. Seriously, they even have a horn. One of the best companion plants in the garden for tomatoes is also one of the best companions for tomatoes in the kitchen, and that is basil. But not for the reason we mentioned earlier. The very reason I love it is the reason it works so well, and that is the scent. There's something so summery about walking through the tomato patch and smelling the tomatoes growing in the garden and then brushing past the basil and smelling that at the same time. I love it. But hornworms hate it. It's a common misconception in companion planting circles and literature that the smell of certain plants like basil will repel certain pests. Recent research actually shows that rather than repelling them, it confuses them by masking the odor of the plant they're looking for. So the spotted hawk moth, which is the full grown uh, version of the tomato hornworm, is actually tr attracted to the tomato plant by smell. And if you've got something like basil in the air, it confuses them and they're gonna look elsewhere. Another beneficial insect that takes down tomato hornworms are parasitic wasps. These are stealthy little insects. They actually lay their eggs under the skin of the tomato hornworm. They hatch out and the little baby wasp larvae literally eat them up inside. Kind of like that last comment from your boss on the last Zoom meeting. To attract these tiny, tiny little wasps that are harmless to humans, they do not sting, you want to plant a lot of plants from the carrot family. It's not the carrot that brings them, it's actually the flowers. So anything like carrots, celery, dill, and fennel. Now on to the next one. Do stink bugs stink up your tomato season? If you have these stippled colored spots on your fruit, it could be the work of a stink bug. One way to keep them off of your tomatoes is to plant a crop that they like even better like cow peas. And you wanna plant the cow peas about five feet or at least five feet away from your tomatoes so they will see those and make a detour and go to the cow peas rather than your tomatoes. Anybody have a problem with flea beetles? If your tomato leaves look like the old fashioned punch ballots, sorry to get political, lots of punch card type holes with no hanging chads, it's probably the work of a flea beetle or many of them. 
Similar to stink bugs, you want a crop planted nearby that will lure them away from your tomatoes. And a crop that they love even better than tomatoes are radish leaves. But unlike the stink bug, flea beetles don't travel very far. They pretty much stick to a very small uh, radius. So you want to plant your radishes not five feet away, but you want to plant the radishes in and among your tomato plants. You can also use pak choy for this. And go ahead and let your radishes go to flower, and that's going to attract even more beneficial insects to your garden. So we all know what aphids look like, right? Now how about thrips? You're most likely not going to see the bug, the thrip, um, and if so, it's not going to be big enough to make out an actual shape. They're very tiny, but you're going to be able to notice the damage. If your leaves look like this, that is thrip damage. Parsley is a plant that attracts hoverflies. Now hoverflies do two things. Adult hoverflies are great pollinators. Hoverfly larvae, on the other hand, feed on aphids and thrips. So go ahead and plant parsley everywhere. One of the pests that's really hard to get rid of once they've taken a hold are red spider mites. These are really tiny, red, spider-shaped mites. I really have a gift for describing things. Here's a picture of the damage they cause. If it gets really bad, you'll see webs on the undersides of leaves, but by that time it might be too late. However, you can head them off at the pass by planting alliums. So garlic, onions, chives, much like the basil, the smell, the really strong smell of the alliums will confuse the spider mites. So they will go over to your neighbor's tomatoes rather than yours, because that guy doesn't watch this channel. All right, let's move into diseases. Are diseases like black spot and blight ruining your tomato harvest before the season even gets going? Plant a cover crop of hairy vetch. That's a thing. A cover crop of hairy vetch. <laughs> Why can't I say that without laughing? A cover crop of hairy vetch. Grow up. <sighs> In research trials, hairy vetch provided a 65% reduction in these foliar diseases and more than an 88% decrease in diseased fruit compared to bare ground or plastic sheeting mulch. The results were actually comparable to fungicide. That's big. So grow yourself some hairy vetch, plant it in the fall, and cut it down to the ground in spring as soon as seed pods begin to swell. Leave it there as a mulch and plant your tomatoes right through it. Since it's a legume, it will also add more nitrogen to the soil than it takes. Now, is there a companion plant that will deter weeds? Yeah, hairy vetch. This is a twofer. Not only does it protect against disease, but it actually protects against weeds. That same mulch that you leave on the ground and plant your tomatoes through. You can also plant a living mulch of crimson clover. Now, I've already got some coming up and it's going to compete with the weeds and it will win. The only thing is, as soon as it goes to flower, you want to keep an eye on it because you do not want it to go to seed or it's going to become unmanageable really quickly. So when you see those flowers start to bloom, you can leave them for just a bit. But before they start to go too far, you want to chop them down at ground level and you can either leave them as a green mulch or you can put them in your compost. It is also a legume, so it's going to add more nitrogen to the soil as well. Now, if you didn't see last year's companion planting for tomatoes video, there are two plants that I want to bring up that are sworn enemies of tomato plants. Now, I know there's going to be comments from you for these two plants. You've grown them successfully with tomatoes for decades, and that's fine. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just telling you what the research shows. The research shows you don't want to grow your tomatoes within a 50 foot radius of the trunk of a black walnut tree. It secretes a substance that will either kill or stunt the growth of your tomato plants. Potatoes are the same family as tomatoes, the nightshade family, and they share some of the same diseases like blight. Although potatoes are much more susceptible earlier on than tomatoes, and so they can pass it very easily. 
So you wanna make sure they're at least 10 feet apart, but the further, the better. I hope that was a good enough list for you to try your hand at some companion planting with your tomatoes this year. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.